from the Mishnah. And this is exactly what they are doing. They're taking a smart person, a philosopher, and they're letting him change whatever he wants so it sounds good to them to make the Bible easier. We're not trying to do that. We're trying to <coughs> keep as much to the root as we can. And everything must have its source. Number seven. One should rebuke those who conclude the prayers of supplication in the Ramados with the blessing, Blessed are you, Hashem, who hears prayer. Rather, one should recite the blessing without mentioning Hashem's name. <coughs> Chapter 2. The laws pertaining to washing one's hands. When a person rises from bed in the morning, he should to the service of Hashem, blessed be he, he is like a new creation. There he should sanctify himself and wash his hands from a vessel as a priest would sanctify his hands from the basin of the temple courtyard each day for his service. So 26.6 contains an allusion to this washing. I will wash my hands with cleanliness and walk around your altar, Hashem, to sound the voice of thanksgiving. Another reason is given for this washing during sleep when a person's soul rises from him, a spirit of impurity comes to rest upon his body. When he rises from sleep, the spirit of impurity leaves his entire, his entire body with the exception of his fingertips and his bones. It will, I'm sorry, whole fingers, not just the nails. It will not pass from them until he pours water on both hands three times only, right and left. It's forbidden to walk four cubits without washing one's hands except for, the mat, for a matter of great necessity. You know, we know that the kids of the Shofan Aruch, the Shofan Aruch itself, is harder. It's, it's more straight in the Mishnah Brewer, the, the, the Chobetz Chaim wrote. He kind of made things a little bit easier and brought it down even more and found some more exceptions. But the, the true Chassid, the two, true pious one, holds straight by the Shofan Aruch <coughs> as much as possible. And there are people who Badafka wouldn't even read the Mishnah Brewer because they wanted to be so strong. But the Mr. Burr is like, is like, when you're eating, it's like eating with a fork. You know how to do what it says, and you know how to live. It gives you an understanding. And for most of us, straight Shofan Aruch is too hard. And we need the explanations, and we need the, the uh, Chavetz Chaim to teach us today how to, to live in a more practical way and still go abide by the Halafa. And there are cases where he could even make it a little bit stronger, certain aspects. And so we say here that this whole idea of washing comes from to being pure like the Kohanim, the priests that were in the temple. And that when we go to sleep, the impurity goes on our fingers. The Talmud teaches us, let me think where it teaches us this. Um, I'll get back to you on that. I think it's Gemara Brachos. I'm thinking maybe Gemara Tanis, but I think Brachos. Once you can look it up at home. So it teaches us that when our soul, when we go to sleep, our soul rises and gives an accounting to Hashem. And, and it says that this sleep that we do is one sixtieth of death. One part to every sixty parts of death. So therefore, if you do not wash in the morning, you're walking around with this spirit of impurity, right? Because we know that after a person goes to the base of forest, after they go to a graveyard, they have to wash their hands. And so you have just done this with your own soul. You have you have touched, you've got like gone into a base of forest, you've gone into the graveyards where all the souls go for accounting. And if you do not wash this off, you're walking around all day long with this impurity, this aspect of death, which is blocking you from having simple, from joy, and from blessing, because you're, you're clinging to the wrong side. Death has the clinging of, of tumah, of impurity.